today we're going to be talking about a cool treat that's been bringing smiles to faces for generations. We're going to be diving into shaved ice desserts from around the world. Our first stop on this journey is going to be in the United States and Canada, where snow cones and snowballs are the shaved ice of choice. So while the terms snowball and snow cone are interchangeable, the main difference is that snow cone is made with crunchy ice, whereas a snowball is created using more of a fine powdery snow. Today, snow cones and snowballs are very popular, especially during the warm summer months. Snow cones are enjoyed topped with a combination of hundreds of different flavored syrups and sometimes paired with ice cream, condensed milk, candies, cakes. They really get extravagant. But narrowing down the exact city that popularized this American summer treat is a little bit of a sticky situation. In the mid-1800s, ice houses shipped wagons with huge blocks of ice from New York all the way to Florida. And when they passed through Baltimore, Maryland, kids would beg for some of the ice shavings on these humid summer days. Soon, moms and towns began to make flavorings to add on top of the ice shavings that these kids would get from the ice truck as a little bit something sweet to go with just the regular ice. The most common was a simple golden-hued egg custard made with eggs, vanilla, and sugar. And that's still the most popular flavor in Baltimore to this day. In 1919, a man named Samuel Byrd invented the snow cone machine and sold snow cones at the state fair in Texas. Byrd's invention would have a downstream effect, which would lead to 1934, when the first ice block shaver was invented in New Orleans. And the rest is history, with famous snowball spots like Hanson Snow Bliss popping up all over the city of New Orleans as a way for hot southerners to cool off in those brutal summer months. Next, we're going to travel to the land of the rising sun, Japan, to try some kakagori. In the 10th century, a book was discovered about the royal courts in Kyoto, including a passage about the beloved summertime dessert, kakagori. This cold dessert came from frozen natural mineral water sourced high in the snow-capped mountains of Japan. The ice blocks were stored in ice houses high in Kyoto's mountain region. During the summer, the ice was then carted down to the palace, hand-shaved with a knife, piled into deep metal bowls, and topped with a sweet sap from vines, hydrangeas, and ivies at the time. In the 19th century, ice was more available to the public thanks to transportation and cold storage. The first Kakagori shop opened in 1872 in Yokohama. Then, in the 1930s, ice shaving machines were invented, which revolutionized the access to this sweet, refreshing dessert. Closely linked with summer consumption, it's a snow-style shaved ice that comes drizzled with a wide variety of neon syrups. The ice here, however, is a little bit different. It comes packed very high, creating a dramatic volcanic effect. Aside from its obvious beauty, and it it truly is a beautiful dessert, the quality of the ingredients and the technique are what make Kakagori so special. First of all, that ice, like I mentioned, comes from the mineral spring, directly from the source throughout Japan, Then the ice is tempered in order to be shaved in such a way that it's consistent, smooth, and fluffy at the same time. The result is an eating experience like biting into fresh fallen snow. Toppings and flavor combos vary by region. There's some regions that are more known for tea producing, and you can find your kakagori here, topped with matcha and mochis, and I've seen some with uh, sweet azuki beans. And kakagori has grown in popularity nationwide in Japan. And our third shaved ice takes us to the beautiful islands of Hawaii. Although technically a U.S. state, let's be real here, it deserves its own time in the sun. For starters, it's not called shaved ice. It's called shave ice. Shave ice in the islands can trace its roots back to Hawaii's storied plantation past with Japanese immigrants, who came to the island to work in the sugar and pineapple fields in the mid-1800s. Japanese immigrants used their tools to shave flakes off large blocks of ice and then coat it with sugar or fruit juices. This refreshing treat became known as shave ice. After they finished working on the plantation, some families opened small general stores in the surrounding communities where they sold groceries, household items, and even shave ice. Unlike snow cones on the continental United States, shave ice is closer to a snowball and it's made with finely shaved, not crushed ice like fresh snow very similar to kakagori. The flakes were traditionally made with hand crank machines. Some stores still operate this way, but after the shave ice is initially made, it's then molded into a cup or sometimes a cone, generously drizzled with colorful syrups, either artificially or naturally flavored. 
and the flavor combinations are seemingly endless. But no matter where you go for the sweet treat in the island, you're sure to enjoy this colorful confection, and it will definitely cool you off on a warm, sunny Hawaiian day. Now back to Asia we go, as we discover Baobing. Thought to have been served in China as early as the 7th century, Baobing is one of the oldest forms of shave ice, and is also found in Taiwan, Malaysia, other places as well, with vendors and chefs often adapting their own versions with local toppings that they can find. It's typically served pile high in a bowl, in a generous portion meant for sharing. Fruit is almost always involved, such as mango, lychee, red beans are also popular. Other possible garnishes include taro, peanuts, mochi, grass jelly, fruit syrups, I've seen condensed milks. It really just depends on the country of origin. But compared to Hawaii shave ice, the texture of baobing is less powdery or snow-like and more like thinly shaved sheets or flakes of ice, and typically a beautiful presentation as well. Sometimes it's shaved from already flavored blocks of ice. Most Taiwanese-style shops buy pre-made flavored blocks, though some do make their own. Our last stop on today's journey around the world takes us to the beautiful country of Italy, where we're going to be trying granita. The tradition of granita could be traced back 4,000 years to ancient Mesopotamia, where couriers would travel 100 kilometers on foot to get snow and ice for cooling of royal drinks at the time, a practice which Romans would also use a few millennia later and which eventually made its way to Sicily. During the Middle Ages, Sicilians would buy Mount Etna snow from the men who would collect it in the winter and store it in caves on the mountain to prevent it from melting. Packaged in bags and covered with ferns and straw, the snow was transported down the mountain aboard carts and mules, uh, ready to be turned into tasty treats to beat the heat for the royal families. With the Arab conquest of Sicily in the 9th century, sugarcane and lemons were introduced to the island, and the locals began mixing in honey as well as aromatic herbs and spices together with this snow that they collected, creating close to a sherbet dessert. In the 16th century, innovative Sicilians began adding sea salt to the snow and using a placetto as a means of refrigerating it. Functioning like a modern thermos, a placetto was a wooden vat with a zinc bucket inside. A mixture of water, fruit juice, and honey or sugar would be placed in the zinc bucket, while a blend of snow and salt would go into the space between the two containers, thus freezing the mixture in the bucket. Eventually, manually operated blades would be added to this bucket to keep the frozen mixture in constant motion, so as to prevent large ice crystals from forming, and so the unique texture of granita was born. By the 20th century, the miracles of modern technology had allowed water to replace snow, sugar to replace honey, and ice cream machines to replace the manual posetto, thus giving us the modern formula for the traditional Sicilian granita. And there you have it, our quick trip around the world to discover some of the shaved ice that is loved by many in the hot summer months, as well as year-round. Uh, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel to explore more shaved ice desserts in the future, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.